So, gentlemen and ladies, uh, this is James Marshall from The Natural Lifestyle, sitting here with my good friend JT Tran, the Asian playboy, all the way from LA. How's it going, guys? We're uh, just down at uh, beautiful St Kilda Beach. Not the greatest weather today, but that's Melbourne for you. It is beautiful, though, we got to admit. Awesome. What I think is that. So, um, I want to have a chat with you today about I guess your specialty in terms of right, right. seduction. Now you've been in this business for how long now? Seven years, since 2004 of January. Right. Right. So, uh, one of the old war veterans around here. You're gonna make it to the decade? <laughs> gotta try, gotta try. We'll, we'll, we'll see where the adventures and misadventures, you know, befall me. Awesome. So, um, now you're well known as uh, the world's best Asian pickup artist. Yeah, I've, I've been accused of that. All right, awesome. Well, I think, it, I think it's definitely correct. Um, so, do you, do you only coach Asian guys or? No, I would say 50 to 75% of my clients are Asian. Like one of my instructors, Garrett, is actually white. And we actually have rerun the gamut from white guys to black guys to Hispanic guys to Indian guys. But predominantly, you know, because I am known to help in Asians, that's my predominant clientele though. Again, the ABCs itself has nothing to do with race. People come to me specifically because they want to see me, like a short Asian guy, accomplish what I accomplish. Okay. So, I mean, do you, there seems to be within the seduction community and at large um, some, I guess, some beliefs and ideas about what it's like to be an Asian man trying to date, particularly right. trying to date uh, different race girls. Right. It is in the community. There's this kind of selective ignorance. The idea that just having enough like verbal game is gonna be able to win the day. But what happens if the Asian guy doesn't speak English right. or speaks just a little bit of English? You know, you can't give a guy like that like canned openers or indirect openers. It, it's because they just can't say them properly or right, right. It strangely. Were, like some of the bantering kind of humor is lost because it's a different culture. Right. Because you have to, you know, they they hear the joke, whatever, and they have to translate into their first language, and then yep. they have to translate it back into English, their proper response, and then you know, this is kind of lag. You know, it's it's just the way it is, and this is true if the person is Spanish or Russian. It's just, if English isn't your first language, you can't always depend upon having like verbal mastery. Right. So if, let's say for a guy who's you know not speaking the, the language that he's in the culture of as his first language, what are some of the different ways that you would handle that? Um, if English isn't his first language, I always tell guys, don't bother with indirect can openers, completely useless. Instead, go with direct openers, what I call my kamikaze openers. Because think about it, what is the one language that everyone understands across the world. The language of war. <laughs> that too, but it's body language, all right? People will form, you know, women will form impressions upon you based off the way you physically appear, your physical confidence. So with direct, it encourages you to have that down, your subcommunication. And then you go up to the girl and you do your, your direct opener. Like, let me tell you this story. Um, it just exemplifies this. It was the first time I had a reporter from Asian Week, and he brought a cameraman along with us in field. He's taking pictures, like, this is awesome. So I've got this Singaporean suit, like, you know, shorter than I am, okay? He's complete fob, broken English, um, and I see this tall blonde. I say, okay, this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna go up there, and you're gonna go direct. You're gonna come and you're gonna tell her you are fucking adorable, whatever. Okay, I got this, I got this. Right? And he runs to the, the tall blonde, and the cameraman follows him. He's like, take pictures. So I was like, uh oh, what's gonna happen? Pressure's on. <laughs> and then, uh, this, I shit, you know what? This is what happened. This is what he says. He goes up to the, the blonde and says, You are fucking beautiful! <laughs> and it worked. There's actually a picture in that newspaper of him number closing this tall, gorgeous blonde, this little floppy Asian guy. Again, you know, it's great if you have verbal game, you have a master of that, but if you know, it takes a while to learn English. It takes a while to master it. Yeah, it particularly time. in terms of flirting, banter. Yeah. You know, it's different from asking somebody where the toilet is. Exactly. You know, but everybody can learn physical confidence. Yep. Everybody can learn, you know, four simple words. You are fucking beautiful. Got that, guys? Yeah. Okay. So, in terms of, I guess if we're looking at, um, you know, not to generalize too much, but if you're looking at what are, what are some of the common issues that guys might come up with if they're, you know, from a traditional Chinese or Korean background that makes it slightly more difficult or, you know, less easy for them to, to relate in the sexual arena? I mean, there are, like, a lot of different factors. This is a very complex issue and it's hard to, to boil it down to one issue. I, I feel that there's, like, three different 
part. There is, yes, you know, societal racism or prejudice, it exists, but you can't pay attention to it because you have no control over it. Yeah. Secondly is the, um, what you believe in your own mind. So many Asian guys, they see, they say, oh, white girls don't like them, black girls don't like them, right? It's this limiting belief, so they don't even try. And they prove to themselves by not, to, not going and trying. Exactly. Um, and then third is the cultural conditioning of, you know, because Asians, you know, aren't, don't have that kind of oral dating tradition, like a machismo that, say, African Americans yep. or Latinos have. Case in point, I remember I was doing boot camp in Toronto, and we had like, you know, four of my students had isolated, four girls, like, awesome, this is good, this is good. They can escalate, they can like verbally escalate, sexually escalate, this is good. But they're sitting like literally like, like this much space. They sit them down, but they have like respectful this distance. Much respectful distance, right? Like this kid is Which is not know, good for seduction. <laughs> like this will not do. So I like I push the guy closer to the girl and I grab his hand. Okay? And this is what happens. I, I swear to God, this is what happens. I throw his hand around the girl and this is what he does. He goes <laughs> touch. So what I did is like, okay, you know what? You're not doing anything. Just say goodbye to the girl, find a new one, sit her down, and kiss her. All right? And you know, he's like all confused. He thought he was having a good conversation. It was a good conversation, but it was platonic. That's all it was. So he did, you know, say goodbye to the girl, and then he brought another girl back like an hour later and ended up making out with her. So that's, that's obviously something that these uh, guys you're dealing with because culturally they're, they're not touching people or mm -hmm. touching women you don't know is not right. okay. Um, these ideas of, I guess, being a gentleman, these kinds of things actually uh, have the reverse effect that they're hoping for. Right. I mean, there are positive stereotypes, like how Asian guys are very respectful, make good husbands, very concentrated on their family, good providers, all right? Good relationship material. But we're not necessarily have the positive stereotypes of being like the love, being aggressive or dominant. So it's you know you want to retain those positive aspects of being a good boyfriend, being a good husband. But you want to inject some romance, some sensuality, a little bit of you know Casanova into your game. Yeah. Would you say that's also? I mean, I find that with students of any race is that if a guy doesn't have a whole lot of life experience or doesn't have broad social circles dealing with different types of people in different uh, places, then they don't have as wide an emotional spectrum to draw from. Yes. Do you sort of talk to guys about that in terms of engineering a lifestyle or you know, moving into new social circles to get experiences? Right, right. There's engineering a lifestyle, but also like physically being expressive. Yep. You gotta smile more, it's incredibly important. There's something I call the Asian poker face. You know, people have a hard time telling our facial expressions unless we're extra animated. So right. you want to be noticed, you want to be expressive, you want to be smiling. Because when you smile, you make the other person feel good. And when they feel good, they smile back to you. You feel good, and then, you know, all of a sudden, you're seeing this black girl, or this Indian girl, or this, you know, white girl that seems interested in you. Or previously, you might have thought that wasn't the case. Mm. Um, but also, when it comes to engineering on lifestyle, I see this often, especially with my foreign-born students, and you see this in colleges, is Asian students that only hang out with other Asian students. Yeah. And part of it is, you know, we're not trying to be racist or anything like that, but... It's who you feel comfortable with. We feel comfortable too, but at the same time, you know, the society at large isn't necessarily, you know, opening up arms and embracing us. But you know what? You know, why should they? We're here, you know, it's up to you to make it happen. You know, it's, victory does not come to the weak. Yep. You go out there and you make it happen. You break open these social circles, you say hello, and you own it. Awesome. I found, um, you know, sometimes with teaching uh, Asian students is, is if they have these beliefs that, okay, white girls don't like them, or you know, they, they think they're all the same, or whatever, um, if, if the guys are, let's say, dressing very generically, mm -hmm. um, or in a typical stereotype of what people perceive to be fresh off the boat, then that's not necessarily going to assist them. Right. Uh, do you talk to guys about this? And we have, it I mean, is. obviously, you have quite a distinctive look that's, yeah. um, you know, definitely your own style. Right. And I'm sure that's not a, an accident. No, no, I, I run the spectrum of having, you know, lazy hair to crazy hair to cool hair. Same with my fashion. I've gone from peacocking to boring to cool to smooth. And, you know, there are advantages and disadvantages. But I feel that with Asian guys, it's more important to overpower any possible stereotype that a girl might or might not have with an overwhelming masculine sexual charisma. Right? So get rid of the Asian uniform. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it's like black and gray. 
right? Um, sure, like patent leather shoes, brown belts. Yeah. Or like the Asian haircut, which is like you either get um, like uh, the chili bowl haircut, like kind of, you know what I'm talking about, where mom and dad tries to save money, but they just put a bowl and just cut around. I, used to I had that one. Yeah, I had that too. Yeah. It didn't help me at all. Or they get like this, this kind of penis head look. Right. So um, you'd be amazed by how having a just being edgy, fashionably edgy, not even peacocking, just being edgy gives you like a one or two points of sexual attraction. Yep. Throwing really cool hair, all right. Again, another point or two points of sexual attraction, and then she starts looking at you sort of as a generic foreigner, or a generic so exotic, person. an exotic foreigner, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, you know, she starts looking at you as like, okay, there's a sexual attraction. There's some sexual value. So, you know, attraction happens before you even approach, before you even talk. There's attraction, and you want her to look at you like, this is a cool guy. He seems interesting. He seems different, you know, but he's also sexual. He's conveying a certain amount of sexuality and sensuality. Yeah, and individuality and being out and proud about it. Yeah. But as, as well as, I mean, obviously good style and knowing style and then breaking the rules a little bit uh, tends to suggest that you understand the social matrix and therefore you're not going to be a social liability, you're going to be a social asset to her. Uh, whereas yeah. you know, a guy who doesn't understand that that's not the way people dress here or that's not cool is likely to be a liability to the girl. Exactly. Even sometimes when I dress, I can't put up, you know, I can't like put on my suit and like my really cool clothes if I'm going to dive bar. It's understanding your environment. And for us, it's like, you know, play one, two levels above everyone else. You don't want to be peacocking around like 10 levels, yeah. right? Just be, you know, be better than the squares around you. Which is not hard. No, it's, it's, it's not. <laughs> Most guys don't have a clue. <laughs> right, which right. Which is good for us. I think it's very important for Asian guys when it comes to fashion is to always have good color, but also equally as important, if not more so, is good fit. Yep. Very important. Like a lot of, I know my mom did this. She would give me handoff clothes, or she would buy me. To this day, my mom buys me clothes too big because I'm supposed to grow into it. I'm like, no. Um, so, a quick tip is like, if you guys see this joint right here called like the brick, and it's supposed to fall exactly where your shoulder bends. So if it comes over here, too, it, big. too big, it makes you look slouchy, it makes you look fat, but you know, obviously if it's too short, it looks too tight. Unless you're in an indie band, right? Yeah, indie band, or you're a steroid monkey, yeah. and you're trying to rock that. But generally, always get your clothes tailored. I always, you know, my vests, my black jackets, my blazers are tailored. Yeah. So. And Vietnam is a good place to get that done. They are, and that and the train. My shit made <laughs> That Trang is like one of those famous villages. Hoi, and Hoi An. Hoi An, probably, yeah. yeah Hoi An. Nice. Cool. So, um, all right, so if you could, let's say, if you, if, you, if you were to say to guys that are, you know, in your demographic, three areas that they need to, to work on in order to make sure that, you know, they can progress in uh, at a good rate, what would you say that is? Um, three areas. I call it holistic, and I don't mean in the hippie, kind of dippy sense. Is, no crystals. No, no crystals. No horoscopes. Okay. It's you know good inner game, inner strength, um, good verbal game, and good physical confidence. Well, you know what I mean by that. I'd say physical confidence, learning your body, like learn how to dance, learn how to move. So many Asian guys are so stiff. Yep. They don't understand the body, and you know women do associate men who move with someone who is good and bad. So that's important. It's true. So work on the physical confidence. Raise up your passive value, whether it's fashion, hair, um, then work on verbal game. Okay? If English is not your first language, go direct. There's no such thing as a good Asian pickup artist who is not good at direct game. Period. If you know if all you're running is indirect game, you think you're good, you're not. You just have lots of chats. Exactly. And I guess the other thing is that um, for a guy that's you know maybe shorter or not uh, as physically imposing, he can actually get away with a lot more direct yes. material than maybe I could, well, you know, not that I'm massive, <laughs> right. but, uh, you know, that a, a big burly guy, a girl sees that coming, whereas she doesn't necessarily see it. Yes, one thing I'll, I'll have often happen is I can go direct a lot. I'm a five foot five Asian guy, and my default, not all the time, but my default tends to be direct. I'll go up to her, you are fucking adorable, you are fucking beautiful, and it works. It's strong, she doesn't expect it, but it adds that kind of raw sexuality, and you have good presence, good physical confidence, she's going to appreciate it. Trust me, I've been teaching for seven years. Some of you guys are like, uh, I don't know if I say say fucking, but you know what? It's dominant, it's raw, all right? It's unapologetic. Exactly. 
words. I mean, it's just four words, all right? And then obviously is the last element, inner strength. Good inner game, all right? Just stop reading about all like the negative stereotypes. Stop going on like those Asian forums, like, oh, the white man bringing me down, they're stealing our women. Stop it, okay? Um, and just reinforce positive beliefs, all right? Honestly, guys, if you go to my, you know, Facebook, you see my pictures, you see my videos, and you've seen the girls I've been with. If I can do it, this five foot five, 150 pound Asian guy, you can do it. Okay. So, what's in store for you for the rest of 2011? You've, I know you've got some cool stuff yes, coming up. Yes, 2011 is going to be a big year. We are going to have our first official product launch, a real flagship product. We've had like little things here and there. But this is going to be huge. Um, we're aiming for June, and we're going to text to sex, which is based off of uh, large part Gareth Jones, my the Gareth Jones, the Gareth Jones, voted best new pickup artist of 2010. Um, text to sex. Uh, then we'll have follow up um, products, including day game infield, and finally, after seven years, my is. ebook. <laughs> I don't even have an ebook. I've been teaching for seven years, and other guys might have 20 by the time. Well, you've been collecting a lot of material. Yes. I'm sure it's going to be good. Yes. So you guys can check it out on my website, abcsofattraction.com, or go to texttosex.com. Awesome. Well, thanks very much for chatting. James, it's been a pleasure as always. As always, I look forward to catching up with you in LA very soon. Yes.